Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. We're looking at question 24 on the 2008 Fermat paper. The number of triples A, B, C of positive integers, such that 1 over A plus 1 over B plus 1 over C is 3 quarters is... Okay. So, uh, I've seen a couple questions in the past like this. And... One thing I'm, I'm, I'm seeing right away is they're not asking me that, you know, A has to be greater than B has to be greater than C or anything like that. So if, for example, and I know this one isn't true, but if, if A could be 2, B could be 5, and C could be 3, then 5, 2, 3, and 5, 3, 2, and, and 3, 2, 5, these are all different. So, so we have to keep that in mind when we're counting. Uh, the other thing I'm noticing right away is there's sort of a a limit to what the, the numbers can be. And, and a great way to do a question like this is to stop and just say, well, let's impose some order as we try and figure these out. Let's, let's say A is greater than or equal to B is greater than or equal to C or something like that. Okay? Uh, and, and, and the reason you can do that, is, or, well, of course you can do that, but the reason that I find it helpful to do something like that is because, at least for the first little bit, uh, so e either this question is, I list a bunch of stuff out and I'm done, or this question e is a little grander, but I still should probably start by listing out a few examples, noticing patterns. You know, is C always A times B plus 1 or something like that? Um, but I should start listing a few out and, and get the pattern or, or finish off the question. And so imposing your own order, like A has to be less than or equal to B, less than or equal to C, uh, for the first little bit, can certainly help you say, well, there's only going to be this many cases and, and things like that. So, for example, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the page from 23. 23 was a fine question. Um, but I'm going to say something like let A be less than or equal to B, less than or equal to C. Now, when I do that, I have to remember when I'm counting that if 2, 3, 5 is a solution I find this way, that I have to count all, all the other ones. There'll be five others with those. But in doing this, I will not uh, get another copy of this pattern. I won't get 3, 2, 5, because my assumption is that A is less than or equal to B, less than or equal to C. Now, uh, one other thing I'm noticing right off the bat, 1 over A, 1 over B. We have three fractions. Add them up to 3 fourths. If A and B and C are all equal to 4, I get a solution. Now, it's a, it's a fine observation, and I'm going to tell you where it's going to lead me in a second, but it's not how you want to start making a list of, of possible solutions. Because, I mean, what about, what if A were 2? What if A were 3? I mean, you're just jumping in at 4 just because you see something. You don't want to lose track. The way to make a list and to notice patterns is to be very methodical, very organized, very algorithmic. Don't just say, oh, I think I'll investigate this case next. Uh, have a starting point. And A being something like 1 or 2 would, would be great. But noticing that, uh, I can then say, well, if A is 5... And, and if I'm assuming A is less than or equal to B, less than or equal to C, then then B, well, here, let's say this. Uh, if uh, Let's say if A is greater than or equal to 5, then B and C are also greater than or equal to 5, and 1 over A plus 1 over B plus 1 over C is less than or equal to one-fifth, one-fifth, plus one-fifth. Remember, if m is less than or equal to n, then 1 over m is greater than or equal to 1 over n. Some little inequality stuff, and it's good to master. Um, a bunch of my calc students do not know these rules and find uh, them very difficult to, to learn on the fly while also trying to learn calculus. But this is then less than or equal to three-fifths, which is less than three-quarters. So there's no way 1 over A plus 1 over B plus 1 over C could be three-quarters. In fact, 
if a is equal to 4 and b is greater than or equal to 5, you're still going to get the same problem. So, it turns out the lowest a can, or sorry, the, the greatest a can be. It's 4. So a is between 1 and 4. And this is great because now, knowing that they have to be integers, a is 1, 2, 3, or 4. So what happens if a is 1? Now we want positive integers, right? Yeah, positive integers. So if a is 1, then 1 over a is 1. And if I add something, if I add something positive to both of those, that's definitely greater than 3 quarters because 1 itself is greater than 3 quarters. So, oops, there are no answers when a, there, there are no cases when a is 1. Okay. What if a is 2? Well, then we've got 1 half plus 1 over b plus 1 over c is 3 quarters. Subtracting a half from both sides, we get 1 over b plus 1 over c is just 1 quarter. Okay. So now the question shifts to, well, what can we have here? And B has to be at least 2. But what could B be at most? Well, C is less than or equal to B. And so that means uh, 1 over C, or sorry, C is greater than or equal to B. I'm getting my inequalities all mixed up. C is greater than or equal to B, so that means 1 over C is less than or equal to 1 over B. So 1 over B plus 1 over C is less than or equal to two copies of 1 over B. And so 1 quarter must be equal to that. So uh, we can actually work out that uh, 8 is going to be greater than or equal to B. Now, the next question is, do each of the possibilities of B between 2 and 8 actually work out and give me an answer as to what uh, C is? So we might make a little chart here. If this is my B, what's my C? So we get uh, 2. Well, no, you're not going to get anything there. Because remember, what, what are we trying to solve for? 1 over b plus 1 over c has got to be equal to 1 quarter. So in fact, actually, uh, b has to be uh, starting with at least a fifth. Yeah, in fact, uh, 1 over b has to be strictly less than 1 quarter. So b has to be greater than 4. Eh, I probably should have mentioned that. Probably should have observed that earlier. So b could be 5, 6, 7, or 8. Uh, what would C then be? So we'd get one-fifth. Well, hold on. Uh, let's say one over C is going to be equal to one-quarter minus uh, one over B. So we've got one-quarter minus one-fifth. That's going to be equal to one-twentieth. And I guess uh, one thing we could say, b minus 4 all over 4 times b. All right, so now 1 over c will be equal to uh, 6 minus 4, so that's 2 over 4 times 6, so 2 over 24. Let's say 1 twelfth. So, so what's c in these cases? 20, 12. Uh, how about when it's uh, 7? So 1 over c is going to be 7 minus 4, which is 3 over 4 times 7, 3 over 28, uh-oh, if I do a reciprocal, I'm not going to get an integer. I'll get, uh, C has got to be 28 over 3, that's uh, about 9 point something. So if B is 1 eighth, then C can also be 1, or C can also be 8, and 1 over C is 1 eighth. So this gives me three cases. And so what have we got? We've got A is 2, B can be 5, and then C will be 20. A is 2, B can be 6, and C will be 12. A is 8, and then we can get 
or sorry, A is two, and we can get two eights. All right, so, uh, but each of these gives its own cases. So there's three numbers to work with. They're going to be six cases in total. Six cases. And this one is a little odd. It's only going to be three cases. And you have to think, well, why is it going to be only three cases? And indeed, why are these six cases? Well, if you're not familiar with arrangements and factorials, it's something that you might want to get into. But I have three different numbers here. 2, 5, 20. I don't have to have 2 at the start. Okay? I have made the assumption that my lowest number will be at the start, but the question didn't ask me that. So I could have 20, 2, and 5. So the question is, how, how many of these that have 2, 5, and 20 in them are there? Well, think about any triple. So A, B, C. We've got three choices for what A can be, either 2, 5, or 20. Once we've made that choice, we have two choices for B. Either, you know, if we pick 20 first, then either 2 or 5. And that leaves only one choice for C. And that gives me a total of six possibilities. But when it comes to choosing uh, with the 2, 8, and 8, well, we don't have different numbers. And you can see that. You get 288, you'll get 828, and you'll get 882. Uh, the only real choice is uh, which number, which of the letters is going to be the 2. There are three possibilities, so that's why three cases. 6, 6, and uh, 3 is, and we'll just write this down in a special color so I can add it up easier later, 15 cases. Okay. So that's what happens when A is 2. Well, I've got 3 and 4 left to consider. 4 is not going to be that hard, uh, but we, we, will, we will go through it. So what happens if A is 3? Well, then 1 over B plus 1 over C is going to be 3 quarters minus 1 third. And so that'll be 9 twelfths minus 4 twelfths. So that'll be 5 twelfths. 1 over B plus 1 over C has to be equal to 5 twelfths. Okay. Uh, so what can we then learn? Well, 1 over B has to be less than 5 twelfths. I'm able to jump into this a little quicker because we already did the, the A equals 2 cases. And so that tells me B has to be greater than uh, 12 fifths, which is about 2. Uh, it's a little, little more than 2, so B has to be greater than or equal to 3. Okay, um, and so if B were 3, then 1 third is 4 twelfths, and that is less than, than 5 twelfths. Okay, what could B be at most? Well, again, 5 twelfths has got to be 1 over B plus 1 over C, but that has to be less than or equal to 2 over B. And we cross multiply, we'll see that B has to be less than or equal to 24 over 5. So B has to be less than or equal to, so this is just under 5, so B has to be less than or equal to 4. This is going to be a much simpler little chart. What's B, and then what's 1 over C? So that'll be 5B minus 12 over 12B. And so as a result, then, what is C? So B could be either 3 or 4, so we'll get uh, 15 minus 12 is 3 over 12 times 3 is 36. So that'll be 1 over 12. C will be 12. Or we could have B is 4, and that'll be 20 minus 12, which is 8, over 12 times 4, which is 48. And that'll be 1 sixth, so C will be 6. So we get 3, 3, and 12. Or we get 3, 4, and 6. Once again, we've got 3 cases and 6 cases. So that's uh, 9 in total on this page. And that's 24 in total. 15 from the last one, 9 for this one. So 24, and we only have one more case to consider. Now, we're pretty close. I don't see 24 in my answers. The answer is going to be 25, but let's just briefly go through that. The A equals 4 case shouldn't be that bad. We should prove that B and C have to both be 4 as well. 
1 over B plus 1 over C has got to be equal to uh, 3 quarters minus 1 quarter is going to be 1 half. Not a problem. Now, uh, 1 over B has to be less than or equal to 1 half. So B has to be greater than or equal to 2, but B also has to be greater than or equal to A. So, in fact, B has to be greater than or equal to 4. Fine, not a problem. Okay, and then uh, we also have uh, 1 over B. So 1 half is 1 over B plus 1 over C, but that's less than or equal to 2 over B. Uh, cross multiplying, we're going to get B has to be less than or equal to 4. So my only case is B is equal to 4, and this also gives me C is equal to 4, which I already mentioned. 1 quarter plus 1 quarter plus 1 quarter is 3 quarters, and this is only one case. There's no way to rearrange the numbers 4, 4, and 4 and get something other than just 4, 4, and 4. Every number has to be 4. So in total, we're going to get 25 cases. I think that was B. Yes, B right there. And that finishes off question number 24. We have just one more question to go, question 25, and then we will be done with our 2008 paper. Join me if you would like to in the next video. Until then, take care.